here today to show you how to operate the VI for the static test stand. And a couple of things that you need to double check when you come in. All of this sensors and connections to the DAC hardware should be set up for you by the lab assistant, but it's also important for you to double check because we all make mistakes. So you wanna double check that there are two white wires coming from each of the load cells on the static test stand each labeled channel zero and channel one respectively. Those should be plugged into the back of the 484 signal conditioning boxes. These signal conditioning boxes are necessary to provide the proper voltages and current levels to the dynamic piezo crystal sensors. The really interesting thing about these sensors, the small white wires that you see here have only two wires in them, but they are both transmitting power and current to the sensors, as well as receiving data back on those same two lines. On the back of the signal conditioning box, you will see at the back of the signal conditioning box, a connection that's a BNC. You'll learn more about these types of connections in the 3300 circuits class in junior year. But on one side, the sensor should be connected, the white wire is the sensor, to the BNC connector labeled sensor. The other cable next to it on the output channel, so the output of the signal conditioner, should be connected to the respective channel on the 9234 National Instruments data acquisition device. There are some important settings here for the coupling, AC or DC coupling. Again, you'll learn about that more in the electronics class. Very important that this needs to be set at DC coupling instead of AC coupling. We also want to have our bias voltage that's provided to the sensor at 11 volts, not 6 volts. So both of these switches should be in the down position. Sometimes they get bumped easily. So double check that. Then the power to the signal conditioning box is just plugged into a standard wall outlet at 120 volts AC. On the front of the box, we have two indicators, one for each sensor. And you need to double check that the indicator is in the green portion. The green portion means that we have a healthy connection through the cable to the sensor. If it's in yellow or red, you need to let a lab assistant or, one of, or myself know so that we can repair that or double check the connections and make sure they didn't get disconnected. On the bottom of the box is the power switch. So make sure that's in the upward position and that power is being applied to both sensors to both power and get the data back for each of those sensors. These knobs on the front are your zeroing knobs and you will zero each of the sensors independently, and you will do that as a very important part of your checklist and a coordination between the indoor test control room people in your group and the people who are doing the launching at the test stand next door. We'll talk about that more when I get to the LabVIEW VI. Otherwise, the LabVIEW data acquisition box should be connected to the Nook computer with USB, and then it also has a separate power cord to a regular wall outlet. The computer should already be logged in, so you don't need to worry about that, so that you can save your data to our data folder, so you won't need to log into the computer. To get to the software program, you need to go to the Start menu and click on the Documents folder link. From that file explorer, navigate to the courses drive. Under AES, go to lab documents, 2004, water rocket lab, and all the information for the water rocket labs placed in this folder. So you'll be referring to a lot of this information. Some of it is also copied to Canvas, 
but things like the high-speed video that we have are too large a file size to put onto Canvas. Most of the other documents will also put a copy. So for this, we're going to go to the static test stand in the middle. We have some static test launch data that we have taken to provide you a starting place. And then we'll be adding to our statistical data set with all of the student data that's collected. In here, we also have a copy of the firing procedure and the USB VI procedure to run the LabVIEW VI. So each of those that are also placed on Canvas are available for reference here. And then the last link, most importantly for this video, is the Water Rocket Thrust Measurement VI short. Double click on that shortcut to open up the VI, as you see here. And then you can go ahead and go through these reminders. These should be somewhat duplicate to your checklist, but a couple of key things just to make sure you don't forget. You've connected all the hardware to the static test stand and everything's ready to go there. Even if they're still setting up and getting pressurizing the, of the rocket, you can go ahead and run the VI. The first thing the VI will ask you to do is fill out all of the test parameters with your group number, your section number, such as 301, the mass of the water that was actually weighed or measured. Um, so a good idea is to weigh that so we can put that in grams. So even though you're targeting 1,000 grams, it might have been 1,002 or 998, because there's going to be some plus or minus error there in how accurately you can get the water what the actual pressure is on the regulator. Again, that's going to be plus or minus one PSI. So your test operators in the launch area can tell you what that pressure is, say 39 or 39.5. The current air temperature, which is available on a weather station inside the test area. It's generally pretty cold because it's an outdoor, indoor garage um, non-heated area of the building. So it's typically in the area around 8 to 12 degrees C. Today it's 9 degrees C. And then any, any relevant comments, like if uh, you have any special test conditions for that day, or especially as you go to do additional testing on your own if you decide to do different water volumes. For this, we are just adding to the standard data set for statistical significance and we'll put one standard 1,000 milliliter test and click OK. Those values will now be updated in the VI so you can see those. The next dialog box is to select the sample frequency. We have different sample frequencies available for higher frequency testing, but that won't be necessary for this class. You can click on the first option for all tests, which is the 1.652 kilohertz. And that's how fast we are taking data. So 1,652 samples every second is what's written to the data file. At this point, you can zero out the sensors and at least get them close to zero. You'll need to fine tune that zero and get it as close as possible right before the launch cord is pulled so that you can be within 1% accuracy. This will take out any offsets due to the weight of the water, the weight of the bottle, any electrical offsets, etc. So we'll go ahead and use each knob for each sensor channel and adjust that until we see at least one decimal place zero. So one zero after the decimal place and then on the other sensor respectively one zero after the decimal place and then wait for the test conductors at the static test stand to be ready to initiate launch as they do that make sure they don't start that countdown too soon um, you want to coordinate your three to one countdown so make sure you get that as close to zero as you can as long as it's within one zero after the decimal place then wait for them to say three on the count of two, hit the enable data capture button, and then at one, they will pull the launch cord and you will see the launch profile on the screen. Make sure that you do not select the data capture enabled button after it turns red. 
It turns red because you're not supposed to click it. If you try to click it again, um, that can cause an error in the VI. So just wait, uh, don't be impatient. You don't need to stop the VI. It will stop automatically and take 12,000 data points. So all you need to do is wait for this dialog box to come up asking you where you wanna save your group data. If that was a successful test and everything went according to plan, then you will go to the folder designated on the desktop in order to save your group data. Put in your group, your number, make sure you put in a zero in front of the number if you have a single digit group number. So zero one, zero two, zero three. This allows you to later easily load in all the data from all the different groups and they all have two digits, whether they're group one or group 10, etc. Then underscore an S for the section number, 302 for example, depending on which of the three sections you're in, and then underscore static test. You do not need to put a file extension on that. That can be easily loaded into MATLAB, so you don't need a TXT or a CSV file extension. Just leave it as the file name and hit OK. If you have multiple static tests, then you'll also put the static test number. And once you hit OK, then that data has been saved. If you need to run another test, you start that over from the beginning and rerun the VI to take another data set. This shows a screen capture of the VI, so you can see how to enter in your group number, section number, mass of the water used, the pressure on the regulator, the air temperature that day, and any comments that are specific to that test. Select the sample frequency, and then the live display of the sensors is shown, force zero and one on the bottom, the summation of those two forces in the top left. Each sensor you will zero out manually until you get one zero past the decimal place. Then enable data capture. Do not push the red button. Wait for launch to occur and wait for the dialog box to pop up asking you where to save your data file. Be sure to follow the naming convention given.